Hey guys, what is going on? This is Beanie and welcome back to another MLB The Show countdown video. And uh, today we're going to be counting down the top 10 left fielders. But first, a couple announcements. Uh, first, this video was made before the roster update that's about to come out in just a little while. Um, so, uh, so yeah, if there are any new like left fielders or anything, they pro they won't be on this list because hey, they're not out yet. And two, I'm gonna be putting up another video whenever the roster update does come out. I'm starting a new series where um, every time MLB the Show uh, releases some new content, uh, I'm just gonna go through it. I'm gonna go through the roster update. I'm gonna go through the new cards and maybe give a few recommendations on what I think you should do. Uh, you know, should you buy this new pack? Should you not? Should you? buy this new card should you not is is uh this card that you know just got upgraded is it worth buying him now that he's upgraded or you know just stuff like that um so uh so yeah that'll be out later today after the roster update comes out probably about an hour and a half two hours after the roster update um but yeah guys uh anyways i will see you in the countdown i don't know where i was going with that Okay, guys, coming in at number 10 is the 87 overall, Jim Rice. And uh, this one was pretty tough uh, because, um, it, you know, left field isn't the most extraordinarily deep position. Uh, after, like, the top seven or eight, it, they're not that great. But in the top seven or eight, they're really, really good. And for number 10, it came down to the 87, Jim Rice, uh, the 85, David Peralta, or the 87, Cliff Floyd. And... I picked Jim Rice just because I, th this is the card I like the best. Um, uh, the, honestly, uh, all three of them are pretty close in terms of how valuable they're going to be for you. Um, but I don't know. I just like the Jim Rice just a little bit more. He crushes lefties. He's very, very solid against righties. He's not the best in the field, but he has an okay arm. You know, 75 arm strength. That's all right. And uh, 61 speed, not blazing speed, but not he's not going to hurt you on the base pass. Um, I would like it if his vision was a little bit higher. And I'm really hoping that later on in the year they give him a better card because this is a card that I could see being very, uh, very valuable and very useful later on down the line. Okay, coming in at number 9 is the 90 overall, Ioannis Cespedes. And uh, I believe this is... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I believe this is the only um, uh, live series card uh, left fielder in, um, on this list. The live series left fielders aren't very good. I think Cespedes is the only diamond, and then you have Brantley and uh, Braun, who are the only other gold. So that's very interesting uh, that you know left field is, is a pretty shallow position. But at the top, it's pretty good. And this Ioannis Cespedes is a very, very solid card. He's more of a defensive play that has passable offense um, than he is like a guy that's going to be a monster in your lineup. 78, 72 versus righties. Also, he has those weird reverse splits that I'm not a big fan of with righties. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, he's got serviceable, he's serviceable against righties, 78, 72 against lefties. Your PCI is going to be super tiny, but he does have powers. So if you square a ball up, it will get out of here. Now, on defense, he is pretty great. He's, um, you know, the 74 reaction could be a little bit better, but in left field, you know, that's not going to kill you that often. Um, and the arm strength is strong enough to, oh my God, whew, I feel like almost threw up my, my kidney there. But um, his arm strength is good enough to where uh, he can play all three outfield positions and be an asset for you out there. I mean, his, I mean, he has an absolute cannon. And if you're using button accuracy, he's super accurate as well. And he can throw out plenty of runners and save you tons of runs. Even though I feel like arm strength is a little bit overrated, um, I feel like it, it, it does have a lot of utility and it, do, and it is very useful as long as that guy comes with some other attributes. And, and the Cespedes definitely does. At number eight, we have the 94 overall Michael Brantley. Um, this card is fantastic. Uh, I'm a big fan of this card, and I kind of would like to put him higher. Um, the fact that you know his power is is up there uh, for for a guy that you really don't think about having a lot of power. You know, uh, his live series card I think is like mid, high 50s, low 60s power. 
but they juiced it up to 72 versus righties for the flashback card, and that is excellent for a guy like this, especially with that 96 contact, 96 vision. I mean, we're talking a huge PCI here, and a little pop versus righties, and, you know, 51 is enough to hit one every now and then against lefties. Defensively, this guy isn't the best, um, but, you know, I, le left field defense is complicated. It's one of those things that I don't think matters that much, but if you can get it, it's amazing to have. And his 80 speed with 85 stealing, that's pretty good on the base pass. That's enough to where he is definitely a threat to still a base or two. And it is going to help you out in the field a little bit where, wherever he may lag behind defensively. Um, that speed may make him play up to where he's maybe a little bit better than advertised. You know what I mean? Okay, at number seven is the 94 overall Jackie Robinson. And looking at this card, you know, I'm, I'm starting to question whether I should have put Brantley ahead of him because, I don't know, this card and the Brantley are pretty close, except this guy hits lefties a little better and the Brantley has more speed. Hmm, I don't know. I think they're pretty close. I'm, I'm still going to give the edge to Jackie, though. He hits righties very well. 84, 76 can hit a lot of home runs for you, especially with that 99 vision. And against lefties, your PCI is as big as it can be. 99, 99 contact and division with 64 power. Plenty enough to get it over the fence. He has that 93 discipline as like a little added bonus. You know, maybe you get a few more check swings here or there. His defense is very similar to Brantley's. Not a great arm, but, you know, average uh, fielding and reaction. So that's pretty good. He doesn't have the speed that makes it play up, though. So that, you know, that keeps him from being... Uh, you know, elite, like top five type guy, but um, he's still overall a very, very good card. Number six was very tough because I had two cards of the same player vying for the same spot. And uh, it was the 95 Matt Holiday and the 93 Matt Holiday, wherever he is. Did I already pass him? Is he with the Cardinals? Uh, yeah, there he is, the 93 Matt Holiday. And uh, so, so it was tough. I was going back and forth with myself. Which one do I put on here? They're so similar. And uh, I, I decided even though the 95 has a little bit more power, um, the the lack of vision for him was was enough for me to give the 93 Mike, uh, Matt Holiday the edge on him. Because on Hall of Fame, you know, it's always nice to have a bigger PCI. And this guy is 84-98 with 82 vision while the other one is uh da, 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 87 80 with 52 vision um if this other one was just like completely devoid of power i would give the edge obviously to the 95 but 87 80 power is plenty enough to get to to hit tons of tanks i mean it's it's fantastic i don't even want to say to get the job done because it's elite um uh you know obviously you aren't getting this guy for his defense this guy is a pure offensive play um, and you also have the added benefit of plug it, being able to plug him in at first if uh, you were so inclined. Um, so overall, just an absolute monster bat. And, uh, and yeah, his defense might suck. That's okay. You're going to be hitting tons of tanks. Okay, and we're going to stay with the Cardinals for number five. And number five is the 94 Lou Brock. And this is the first card or the first, uh, yeah, the first player reward that you get for uh, you know, making your path along the dynasty program or whatever. And I think, I think this card is a monster. Um, you know, a lot of people may be reminded of the Carl Crawford. Uh, maybe it was like, I think the 90, 92 Crawford or 91 Crawford from last year, um, that had very, that was very good against righties and had blazing speed. Um, I think this card might be a little bit better, but I'm not really sure why I feel that way. He just, I don't know, he's really good. I've had him several times in Battle Royale, and he's amazing. I'm also very, very close to getting him on my own. I'm very close. Uh, it's kind of weird with the Dynasty program. I'm very close to completing like a ton of different things, but I just haven't quite completed all of them yet. It's kind of funny, but I'm about to get this guy fairly soon. And he's a monster against right. He's 99-78 with 80 vision. Um, and, and obviously that 99 speed with 97 stealing, it's elite. Some of the best uh, best base running in the game. And um, I, I don't think this is a guy that you have to platoon. I think 64-50, while not very good, um, 
this is a guy that if you get the bat on the ball and don't pop it up, he's going to turn a lot of outs into singles um, just because he is just so damn fast. And, uh, you know, his fielding isn't the best, but he does have that 87 reaction with that 99 speed. So while, while his glove may not be, like, super reliable whenever he gets to the ball, he's going to be getting to, like, almost everything. Like, he's going to be great out there in the field. Um, you, th there just might be a few moments where you're frustrated, where he, like, misses a pop fly. But, you know, if you don't have an elite defender out there, that's going to happen to a lot of people. I think this card is definitely top five worthy. At number four, we have the 90 overall Kyle Schwarber. This is the Cubs collection card. Um, and, I, man, I, <laughs> thinking back, like, do I want to put Brock ahead of him? Um, I don't know. It's kind of tough. But this card does. I have played with him a couple times in Battle Royale. And it does seem like he plays above the rim. Like, I know 94 and 99 is fantastic. The 34 vision is a little concerning. But even against lefties, this guy is pretty darn good. Even Your PCI is going to be super tiny, but it seems like that 84 power, and I don't know, I guess just a few, like maybe a swing or something, gives you a little bit more leeway within the PCI so that if you do uh, you know, catch a ball in the right way, you're going to hit a lot of doubles and a lot of home runs. Um, defensively, this card is is just not good. Um, he's uh, he's pretty terrible out there in left field, and it sucks that he doesn't have catcher as a secondary position because if he did, this card may be like the best catcher in the game right now. But uh, even though his defense is terrible, I, I I'll take terrible defense for a guy that's going to hit tons of bombs for me. Um, but uh, yeah, this I, I don't know I, it. I feel like maybe the Matt Holiday and the Lou Brock should be above this card because Matt Holiday is a bit more of a balanced hitter and even really a better defender. And uh, the Lou Brock has all that speed and he's very good against righties, just like the Schwarber. But I don't know, I feel like his attributes play up and that kind of makes a difference for me. It's not all about the numbers. Sometimes guys just feel better, you know? I. It's not a very as an empiricist as an empiricist I really hate that explanation I really really do but uh it, it just it is what it is you know I he feels good whenever I play with him number 3 is a guy that I didn't even realize was a was a primary left fielder I thought he was a primary first baseman until I looked at the card I and I, he probably would have been left off the list if I wouldn't have just kind of on a whim looked at him but uh, it's the 94 Willie Stargell, and um, this card has a lot of benefits to it. One, he's just an absolute monster at the plate, obviously. Very like the Schwerber, he, he, he doesn't have the best vision, even though his vision is better. I mean, he doesn't have great contact versus lefties, but he has great power, even better power, and contact versus lefties. Um, against righties, he's almost just as good, 90, 99. With the vision, he probably is better. Um, his defense is just a little bit better, very similar to the Schwarber card, honestly, except there, uh, you know, a few major differences. One, I feel like he's a little bit more balanced as a hitter and two, he has a little bit more positional variety, not even a little bit more, a lot more. Um, he can play first base, he can play center field, he can play right field. I don't know why you would want to put him in center field, but it's nice to have the option there for like emergency situations and stuff like that. Um, and right field, you could put him there too if you it, you know if they come out with like Stalker later in the year and you want to play him at left, whatever. I don't know, but uh, but yeah, this card this card is a monster um, and definitely definitely top three. I don't know six to three were were really really difficult to put together. I'll be honest. And number two is a 98 overall Luis Gonzalez, and kind of like all these other cards, this is just a straight offensive play. I'm telling you, defense doesn't really mean a ton in uh, in left field. It's nice to have, but I don't really dwell on it that much. And this card, you know, what can you say about him? 97, 93, 75 versus righties, 85, 86, 75 versus lefties. A guy that you, you don't even think about platooning. Um, good discipline. I don't really care about that, nor the clutch. Um, he He's not the fastest guy in the world. He doesn't have great defense. Um, he's just a guy that you're going to put in that three hole in your lineup and just kind of forget about it because he's going to get the job done for you every time. This is a fantastic card. One more little note on him. I really, really like his stance and his swing. He has that wide open stance. I mean, he... 
like he's almost facing the pitcher directly a la um what was that guy's name uh the guy what, what what was the guy's name uh guy i i it's on the tip of my tongue um the guy that whenever he hit he would do this and face the pitcher and then and then whenever the pitch was coming he would turn like this what was that guy's name it was like tony hispanic last name was it tony was his first name tony I don't, I, I don't remember. God, that's going to drive me fucking insane. What was that guy's name? Somebody in the comments tell me. And obviously, number one is the 99 overall Ted Williams. And uh, just a quick note before I talk about him. The 94 Ted Williams would have obviously been very, very high on the list too. If it didn't uh, uh, violate, you know, my... my codes of con or rules or whatever when it comes to making these uh these lists um I, I i'm not gonna put two of the same card on there otherwise like maybe brantley would have been in there twice you know I, I i don't know just i don't think it's a good idea um i i like having a little more variety when it comes to these lists but the 99 ted williams is just dumb he's perfect against righties literally perfect 99 99 99 Against lefties, he's almost perfect. 99, 87, 99. Uh, with 99 vision and 89 clutch. And even though clutch doesn't really matter. Um, and uh, defensively, who gives a shit? Like, okay, he's not going to be great for you defensively. If you complain about that while getting 99 fucking everything, you, you know, suck my dick. Because this co this this card is unreal. The, the one thing I will say about it, kind of like Luis Gonzalez, where I love his swing, I'm not a big fan of Teddy Ballgame swing. A lot, But a lot of people are. A lot of people like that short, compact swing that I've never, I don't think I've ever seen outside of Ichiro in real baseball. I don't know. There are like a few slap hitters that hit that way. But guys that are hitting 40 home runs a year don't do a little fucking slap swing like Maurer did last year, like Ted. Uh, I, I don't know. I hate that animation. But anyways, uh, a lot of people like it. I don't, you know, whatever. Anyways, uh, that he is the number one guy, and that is the list. Um, I will be coming out with... Uh, you know, the, uh, the roster update stuff and the new cards and stuff like that a little bit later on whenever that content drops. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Please like, subscribe, retweet this video for a chance to enter the Eric Cosmer jersey giveaway. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys. Uh, I don't know. I can't fucking think of anything like kind of quirky and, you know, off the cuff to say. I can't give you an off the cuff moment right now. I'm, I'm fucking sorry, okay? I'll think about it for later, even though it's not even off the cuff, but think about it. Bye. Peace.